Hello everyone, um, time for another wee quick tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at vertex painting in Unreal. So this kind of ties in nicely with the last wee tutorial that we did on decals. Um, we did that as a way of creating kind of variety in our modular pieces. Uh, so when we're reusing the same objects over and over again, uh, they don't look like um, carbon copies of each other, they don't look like photocopies. And that stops the Stops the game world looking too fake and mundane. So what we're looking at here is what we're going to be creating today are these wee stone lanterns. So it's a wee simple 3D mesh. And if you were making kind of a fantasy landscape, a forest or something like that, you might see these wee stone lanterns. A very simple wee mesh, nothing too exciting with them. But I've applied a vertex paint material to it. Um, generally when we texture something, we put one material on. And... Uh, we unwrap it and we texture it and that's that's what we get. Vertex paint allows us to go a, a step above and what we have here is we have a base material is the stone lantern itself and then the second material on top of that we have moss and what vertex paint allows us to do is paint where that moss is going to appear. So each of these two lanterns is painted differently as you can see here this one's a bit mossier on top this one only has a little bit of moss and we can paint this in real time. Every time we make an instance of this in Unreal, we can change how, where the moss appears and how much moss there is. So we can do this for all kinds of stuff. If we have a, a nice clean piece of wall, we can have a, a secondary dirt texture, which we can then apply dirt selectively to it. Um, or all kinds of stuff. It's not the most difficult thing in the world to do. We just have to add a couple of nodes to our standard texture material. So we're going to have a wee look at that now. The one wee thing I want to draw your attention to first of all is just the actual design of this lantern. So the process is called vertex painting. And what this means is that uh, texture data is applied at every single vertex. So if I bring up the lantern here and I show you the wireframe, you'll see that we've actually got quite a dense wee mesh. We've got a lot more subdivision here than we might need to for a very efficient mesh. So see we've got all this kind of subdivision here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so uh, columns wide, maybe, uh, 10 tall, just for this wee small section of the lantern. Um, if we were being really optimized, we might just have two or three sections there. But having all these extra vertices means that we have a lot more uh, basically a lot more vertex resolution that we can paint on so we can get a lot more detailed um, secondary texture in there. It kind of paints each bit of the secondary texture on each point and then blends it out to the next point. So the smaller that distance is, um, the more the, the tighter the resolution will be. Um, long story short, if you want to do vertex painting, add extra geometry to your mesh, subdivide it and think ahead that you're going to be applying subdivision, or sorry, you're going to be applying vertex painting. Uh, so that's all I need to see there. <clears throat> that's our material that we've already made. So let's just go straight to it. Guys, if you're on my 3D environments course in the college, this um, resources will be available to you, this little stone mesh, on your canvas page, on the 3D environments page. Um, there's a zip file there. It has a written tutorial and it has the, the mesh itself. If you are watching online, you're not part of my course, the same principles will apply. Just to take a simple mesh and you can, you can apply this to it. Um, I'm not going to use an actual UV unwrapped texture for this. I think I did unwrap the mesh itself, but I've just thrown on a basic stone texture. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Um, but okay, let's get started. First thing I've done, I have just uh, dragged in a copy of this mesh. We can see there it's actually massive, I believe, and 3ds Max, I just scaled it wrong. So I will just put the scale down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. That's probably the correct, yeah, that looks more like the correct size. These two are still double the size, but anyway. Uh, so We've got our mesh, now we're going to make, I'll just rename this one so I know which one I'm looking for. Yeah, rename. Uh, tutorial lantern, that'll do lovely. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to create a new material. Just right click in the content browser, create material, and I'll call this um, M Lantern uh, VP because it's a vertex painting one. Uh, and yeah, that'll do. That'll, um, that'll do grand. M Lantern VP. So we'll double click this. This is sort of semi complicated in that we kind of need to have a, a double of everything. So we need to pick what our two textures are going to be. And if we have any other maps, we need to also duplicate those other maps. So I'll show you what I mean. Texture sample. <clears throat> We're going to create one texture sample for our base, which in this case, I'm just using the starter content. I would use the sandstone. And then I'm going to add another texture sample. which in this case will be uh, moss, again, just from the starter content. It's not really um, ideal, it's not optimized for this kind of thing. This isn't what the moss was originally intended for, it was intended just for ground cover, but the effect is it's fine, it'll do for this wee tutorial. Uh, so we've got that, we've got these two. Uh, if we want normal maps as well, uh, what I'll do is I'll just select both of these, I'll hit Control C and Control V. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing away one here. I'll just pull these over to the side. So these two are my base color texture samples. And these two down here, I'm just going to swap these over to the normal maps. Sandstone normal. Uh, moss normal. There we go. And what we need to do with this is add in what's called a linear interpolate module. But we are, or sorry, node. We are looking for that. We can just type in LERP, L-E-R-P. And the one we want down here, linear interpolate. And what a LERP does, uh, or a linear interpolate to give it its full name, is it basically goes between two values. So we can go between uh, value A, which will be our uh, sandstone, and value B, which will be our moss. I will just plug those in at our little output, um, 1 to A, 1 to B. What I want to do, I'm just going to copy, Control C, Control V, this node, right down here. And sandstone to A, moss to B. As long as these are in the same order as the one above, it's fine. We're going to be kind of running the two in tandem. And then what we will do is just plug the output of that into the base color. I'm plugging the output of that into the normal. We could also be creating maps for the roughness and specular, metallic, etc., etc. But we'll just keep this nice and simple. So we've got these two, and what we need to do now is basically determine how do we actually paint between the two, or how do we go between the two. So we've got this set up that we can go between these two, but how do we know which one is which? We want to add an extra little node here. If we right click and type in vertex color node, and we'll get this here a constant as a vertex color node. And we just want to, <coughs> excuse me, we just want to take this and plug it into the alpha of that. And we will copy that, Control C, Control V. into the alpha of the one below. So you see we've got kind of a, a nice symmetrical a nice symmetrical material here. It makes a kind of a logical sense. And really that's we could leave it there. That would be it. That'll be all we have to do. Another wee thing that we could do later on is we could add a texture coordinate to this in order to scale up or down the individual, pardon me, the, uh, the tiling of our sandstone or the tiling of our moss. Um, I'll not do that just now, I'll just save this and we'll check that it works. Oh, 
Always take a little long to do this. Apologies for the wait. There we go. And now M Lantern VP. That was the one I just created, wasn't it? Yes, it was. All I'm going to do is drag that onto this material. And you'll see that we are getting the sandstone. Now, I don't know why the sandstone's coming out this greenish kind of colour. It should be a plain kind of orange brown, but it's fine, we can work with it. What I want to do now is go over to the paint tab. So you can see we've got our we've got our sandstone, but we're not seeing any moss here. We need to actually paint the moss in. The uh, the sandstone was our top texture, it was our in our linear turbulent, it was our A channel. So it's, it takes priority, it comes up first. Um, and then we need to actually paint on the moss now. So if we go over to the <clears throat> if we go over to the paint channel here, and um, we're not going to touch any other of these options, we're just going to stay in colours, and we're going to leave paint and erase at black and white. So we are working off the we're working off black and white values basically. Black will be zero and white will be one value. We go from a value of zero and one, so it'll be uh, zero moss to completely moss uh, from that value of zero to one. And that's represented by black and white. Very similar to how layer masks work in Photoshop if you ever use layer masks, but um, I'll just, I'll, it's easier to show you what's actually happening. If I hover over my lantern now, you'll see that you get this little paintbrush icon and you'll see that it's actually highlighting every single individual vertex that that paint, uh, paintbrush will touch. And if I just click on it, you'll see that it turns, sorry, I'm trying to get in a bit closer here. You'll see that it turns to the moss. Yeah. And the more I paint, the more it becomes like moss. So depending on what I'm painting, whether it's a sewer drain or a wall or whatever, I can stick to certain edges and corners. But just to demonstrate, I'm just going to randomly paint parts of this. So say actually we could do the base. If this was a stone lantern that was in a grassy field, we could paint a lot of moss along the bottom here. And not really see on the, the dark side. But if I just stick here. And you'll see obviously it's painting it to the, the vertexes that I have uh, in the original base mesh. So that's why the more vertexes we have, the more detail we can get with the paint. And in fact, I can turn down the radius of my brush here. That's way too big. It was. I was ugh. Where are we? It was originally ten. I'll put that down to be three instead. Get a really small brush. So say I just want to add in a little bit at this corner here. Let me see where's the bright side of it. Just a little bit of that corner. We're just painting in those vertexes. And we could do sort of a, a, a snaggy moss trail all the way up the side. The more detail you have, the more options it gives you, basically. Or the higher resolution you have, the more the more options you get. Paint a wee bit of moss there. Like so. That's effectively it. That is really... Uh, that's really it, as I say. Um, now, where the beauty of this comes in is if I make a, a duplicate of this, Control c Control v and then move out of the way. So we've got two that are the same, but I can go back to my paint and start painting this one differently. Uh, each instance of that model will have its own unique paint job. So you can see the one on the left has a little bit of moss, the one on the right has a lot of moss. And if we were placing loads of these throughout a the level, um, we can have different moss on each one. It'll make them look that wee bit unique, and it will help stop the level looking too much like the same thing copied over and over again. Uh, we could even use it for like storytelling purposes. We could have, um, say, a part of the temple that's nice and new and pristine, you won't have any moss on it. And then you go to the old abandoned part of the temple, and everything has moss on it, and it kind of shows you that it's been left and it's decrepit and nature's taken over. Whatever you want to do. Um, it's just it's another tool in your belt to help you with uh, your environmental storytelling and make it look more realistic and make it look more interesting. Um, anything else I want to add? Uh, nah, do you know what? We'll leave it there for now. That's grand. I can't think of it. I'm sure there probably is more, but we'll leave it there for now.
that's the basics of vertex painting. So if you're creating your environment for your assignments, I would like to see you try and incorporate that at least on one or two of your props. You can see it's not difficult to incorporate at all. Even using the starter content there, just throwing a bit of moss on. If you had an unwrapped texture, you could create a clean and pristine version and create a, a dirty grimy version or even just put a, a generic sort of grime texture over the top of it and just paint it in. Um, actually, oh yes, one thing I didn't show you is actually was that um, I painted the moss on. What if I want to get rid of the moss? So we're black, white, we're going uh, paint and eraser. Is it the shift tool? Yes, it is. Actually, this is unusual. Oh, that's weird. Why is it doing that? Remember I said, why are we getting this sort of 50% green? I have no idea why I'm getting that. But when I hold the shift key, the shift is the eraser. Is this partially moss coming in here? Or have I got one of my channels wrong? I don't know. Um, but if I paint, we get moss. If I hold shift, it erases that moss off and goes back to the base layer. This is what it should be appearing like. I don't know why I'm getting that weird kind of half green, sort of bronzy kind of thing. It's a cool effect. I like it. But I don't know why it's doing that. But we can paint out and then paint back in. All I'm doing is holding the shift key. Oh. Not the alt key, as I just held there. Actually, let me try this one. This one was doing the same thing. This is the old one I tried earlier. Yeah, we were getting that weird green. I must look at it that why that was coming up with that. I don't know. That's really strange. Unless this is some kind of 50-50. But no, because it's not the same color. I don't know. I'll have to investigate that. But uh point is I can paint on I can paint on my moss and with the shift key I can get rid of the moss. But I can also set my brush strength. Uh, lower, so it was a 0.5 there. If I set it lower, I'll get very, very faint moss. So it won't be quite as strong. I have a paint over a couple of times, it'll come in stronger. And I'll set that strength all the way up to 1. You see it comes out at maximum strength. So if I just want a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, are we suggesting the moss put the strength way down? And I just paint in very lightly and barely see it. And I'll soften it off a wee bit. And you can see that our circle has uh, two green circles there. The darker green on the inside and the lighter green on the outside. That's a kind of a fall off, a kind of a gradient area. So that would be this. That's probably here if I put that all the way up. We'll get a harsh edge on this. I'll put the strength up as well so you can see. You get a harsher edge on that. Whereas if we have a fall off, it'll be a very soft kind of gradient edge. And then obviously we have a radius, we can just make this bigger or smaller. But we're working on a very, very small scale. So the default was 10. And that, I put that up to 65, so it's way too big. It'll just instantly cover the whole thing. You know what I mean? So keep your radius quite small, maybe 10 or less. And it's quite fiddly there, so you'll have to type it in manually. So value of 3, there we go. Uh, yeah, that, we'll leave it there. I must go and investigate what the story is with this sort of semi. It doesn't look like the moss is coming through. It looks like something else is a different color. What is it bleed through from the normal map? I'll go and find out. I don't know. But uh, we'll leave it there. And uh, yeah, let me see you incorporate that into your designs. And if you have any questions, uh, ask me on the Discord. So thank you very much guys, and we will see you for the next tutorial very, very shortly.